Welcome to the Habit-Based Lifestyle Podcast. Use the power of discovering new habits to create success in all areas of life. Body, fitness and nutrition, being, spirituality, passion and purpose, balance, marriage, kids and relationships, business, marketing, sales, leadership and systems. Transform your life by learning how habits work. And now your host, a husband, father, entrepreneur, trainer, coach and warrior. Jesse Yule. Welcome back to the Habit Based Lifestyle Podcast. I am your host, Jesse Yule. And today we're going to be talking about the habit of content creating. Today I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Brody Pearson, world renowned photographer. Uh, you work with people who have been featured in Forbes, TEDx, uh, TEDx speakers, uh, Thrive Go- Global. And clients who have been on Gary V, uh, he's a brand strategic st- strategist, uh, brand photographer, podcast host of the Branded Podcast. Hey, welcome, man! Thank you for having me. I'm pumped to jam on content today. Let's get a rolling. Yeah, that was uh, that's quite the intro you have, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I start well. I started off as a. Do you want me to tell my story in the background? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna get into yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I grew up on a ranch. So we were actually talking about this. I grew up on a ranch up in Canada. And I always like to tell this story where my family grew up. uh, I was the only person in my grade 10 class. So our teacher would beam over a screen to us. So I always like to tell people that the closest grocery store to us, 45 minutes away. Oh, wow. Yeah. So pretty, as you can imagine, pretty isolated out there. But my mom gave me a camera when I was 15 years old. Okay. And I was like, okay, cool. I want to try this. And another shocking story. I have four sisters. So I would I would study YouTube in my free time. So I was the only person in my class, right? So right. have all this free time when you finish your work. So I would study YouTube and then I would say, okay, sisters, let's go. Let's and I would practice. So I got really good and started posting on Facebook. And this is kind of where the whole topic of content comes into play. So okay. I started creating content on Facebook and I started booking out a lot of weddings. I was like, okay, cool. I was 17 years old, had a fully booked out, you know photography business in weddings. Yeah. Um, So I got in there and then I was like, "Eh, I don't really like this. It's not my favorite thing. Went to university and my sister introduced me into this whole kind of online coaching space. So she's a a leadership coach herself and she was going to all these conferences around the world. And she showed me this photographer. And at the time, there's not a lot of people who are doing brand photography, maybe like three other people. If you Googled it now, it's becoming more popular and more people are showing up, right? Because the industry is booming. But when my sister showed me this other photographer mixing this whole business side and the photography side, I was like, cool, like I can do this. So uh, she was going to Florence, Italy, and she put my name in a hat there and I got five clients over in Florence, Italy. So, oh, wow. yeah, so I was I was shitting my pants because one of my clients that I booked there was a uh, she owned like a multi-million dollar magazine company and i had no clue what i was doing okay absolutely no i was like well i'm gonna slap together this word document and hope to hope the best but ended up crushing it there in florence and then that just kind of snowballed from there um and i got to go to paris and miami and hawaii and then all these things and then you know started working with tedx speakers and people featured in forbes and just kind of has snowballed from there. So now I work with people, um, fly out one to two times a month and work with people helping them build their brands online. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Man. So that's why I'm pumped to be here to talk about content. Yeah. So, you know, you're you're a 15 year old kid growing up, you know, in small town, you you lived in what? Cal- you lived in Calgary, right? No, two hours outside of Calgary. Okay. Two yeah. hours outside. So you're not even really in, you're like, in the boondocks oh, of the boondocks. Canada. Our closest neighbor is 15 minutes away. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you you go through this, you know, I think you kind of revealed how, you know, young you are. And the reason I want to say that is because there's a lot of young people out there who like they like they don't know what they want. And like, dude, you're crushing it. And you're how old? 23. Yeah, you're 23 years old. You're you act like you're like 30, <laughs> yeah. 32 in the way of maturity. Um, so that's like a huge compliment thank for you. you. Thank you. Uh, but you're literally like crushing it right now. But I want people to know that, you know, you got passionate about something and you took off on it. And it's kind of like you were you did it at such a young age that you didn't look at, you know, well, what if this doesn't work? What if this doesn't work? You just went and did it. 
Um, so can you talk a little bit about like your mindset with that? Yeah. So I think growing up on the ranch, yeah. um, we were always taught from, you know, from a young age is if you work hard at something, it will happen. And I think no matter what for myself anyways, is there's always doubt. I think everybody has doubt, right? Yeah. Doubt will always sneak in. But the only way through that doubt, the only way through is by taking action. So right. the first time, like when I got onto that plane to to go to Florence, Italy, or the first time I worked with a TEDx speaker or people like uh, photograph people like Shalene Johnson or Jan Jasmine Starr, um, I was scared every single time. Like right. I shake my I have, I have uh, you know butterflies in my stomach. I feel like puking and. I think the biggest thing around that is just action. You don't know the outcome unless you actually go go out and do it, right? And I right. think that's just forming a habit of taking action every day, right? Showing up even if you don't know what's what's the outcome, right? So there's gonna right. there's, there's always an outcome. It's either gonna be good or bad, but there's always gonna be a learning experience from that. And I think just growing up on the ranch and teach what taught me about hard work and just showing up and taking action, no matter what, something will happen. Okay. Awesome, man. So your first time you go to your first big real gig yeah. is, you know, you get f not not one, but you get five yeah. and they're all, you know, somewhere else where you've never been. Like, what was that like to, you know, here you are going to, you know, you know, Europe or uh, this whole other place you've never been. And then not only that, you got to show up for this person who's you know, kind of at an elite level yeah. and you're like, oh my God, can I do this? Yeah. Uh, tell me a little yeah. bit about that. So that was me when I was 19 and looking back, it's so funny over the years, how just even in one year or four years, like how your life can be at a completely different, right. different stage. Like I was just finishing my second year university. So, you know, there's always, there's always the thing around like. So university for you is college. college. Yeah. Okay, college, yeah. college, okay. university, interchangeable okay. between the two. But yeah, I just finished. And I think at that point, um, I was like, do I get a summer job or do I, do I go out all out on this? And the cool thing is, is I, I applied for a summer job because again, I think that doubt came in a little bit, but right. I, I got to the top two applicants and didn't get that job. So I was like, well, it looks like this is what I have to do. So I went all in and all out on that. And again, stepping on that plane, like I was shaking in my boots. I still shake in my boots before I go, you know, to do anything because I, I love to uh, provide excellence to my the people I work with. But I think no matter what, I think no matter what you do, you're always going to be nervous about it or for myself right. anyways. I always, you know, you might be anxious before. But again, I think a lot of it comes down to preparation too, where you are, you know, you think about it, you visualize it. I love, uh, I love visualizing visualization. I use it tons. Um, and then you just go out and do it. And that's the biggest thing. Again, it's, I'll say it again, is you'll never be prepared for it. The only right. way that you'll be actually prepared is just by going out and doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, what was the first conference you say you went to some of these conferences yeah. what was the first one that really had the most impact on you that that first one because i think for myself that was the first time i was like wow people will actually pay me to travel this little this 19 year old 19 year old kid that people will actually pay to pay me to go travel and to build their brand online. And for me, that was like, I think for a lot of business owners, I, I'm sure you can um, relate is your first sale and kind of something new or a new space that you go into. You always remember that one. Right. And it validates the idea of like, OK, I'm on to something now. I just got to keep pushing forward at it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So you obviously have been in personal development. You know, it sounds like your sister kind of, you know, pushed you into that yeah, yeah. and said like, hey, man, but what is What's something you've done or maybe a, a seminar or someone you've met that's really like impacted you? Yeah. And honestly, my clients. So okay. it kind of sounds crazy. I've, I, you know, I've been masterminds and I'm with people, but my clients, I think the coolest thing is no matter what you want to do, you have to surround yourself with people who you want to be like. So, right. you know, right away out of the gates, working with someone who already had a million dollar, a multi-million dollar business right there you know, you create a, a friendship and a relationship there. Right. And then, you know, keep pe meeting people like, you know, you and Katie and, you know, our friends, Brooke and Brett, I know they're going to be on your podcast. Um, just my clients, honestly, every single person I work with, I learn something from them. And I think for me, that's just been the biggest personal development. And I think for anybody listening is there's, you can look for nuggets of personal development, in everybody you meet, you just have right. to, you have to listen and be open to it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And you know, what's cool is, you know, I don't know if I would have listened to this because like personal development wasn't a huge thing yeah. when I was, you know, 19. I don't know if I would have really listened at 19. 
uh, like you did. I would listen to guys, you know, about working out yeah. and stuff like that. That was like where they got credibility. But anybody else, I'd have been like, oh, I, I kind of already know it. So the fact that you've, you know, put yourself in a place to where it's like, hey, I'm going to listen to, you know, whoever I come across with. I'm going to take something away from them and I'm going to learn to apply it in my own life. Uh, that's that's pretty big, man, because I don't know if I would have done that at 19. I don't know if I would have done that at 23. Um, you know, definitely now uh, I do that, but it's like, I, I'm watching you at 23. I mean, we just did a photo shoot and I'm watching you and I, I'm really like looking at, okay, like there's no way this kid's 23, you know, he's, you know, he's like ha very professional. And if you guys like, I am actually giving Brody a plug because <laughs> he's very professional. Um, Everything he does is like top notch. He's always, you know, on his A game. And it's really cool to see that. And I want you to see that because like I see that in you. And I've had like my own business for 12, 13 years. I've hired other photographers. But it's like, dude, there's a difference between you and anybody else I've worked with in that side of it. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. So, so I wanted to have you on because, you know, creating content is a huge thing. Um, you know, now we have, you know, almost 50, I mean, we probably have more than 50 if you start factoring in email and all TikTok these other stuff, and... but <laughs> we have over 50 ways to organically reach people. Um, and everybody always asks, Hey, what's the best? And you know, what, what's your answer on that? My, my number one answer is, is wherever your ideal client's hanging out. Okay. That's my number one. You know, it could be Facebook. It could be Instagram. It could be LinkedIn. It could be TikTok, right? But the number one thing, again, it always comes back to first, you have to nail who you're talking to okay. online. So I, when I, when I advise with people and do brand strategy sessions with people, it's okay, who are we talking to? What's their biggest problem that they have and where are they hanging out? Okay. So once you know those two things, then you actually can start creating the content. And then you can, on the third thing, if you know where they're hanging out, that's where the platform that you have to be. So I always say master one to two where your ideal client is if you're just starting out. And then once you've mastered one of those two, you have a system and a structure and you delegate that out. Then you can go into other things to, to drive other traffic to your website or to your blog or whatever it is that you choose. Okay, awesome. So, you know, number one is, you know, hey, it doesn't matter which one it is it's just which one is more likely to have your ideal client yes avatar hang it out yeah yeah so um so with that you know what's kind of the the next strategy after you kind of figure out your avatar what platform you know you talk a lot about consistency you're yeah. always you know putting yourself out there like how does that actually work yeah so once and this is my belief for anybody is if we're not we all have to become content creators so right. in the in this century in this day of age of business if you are not creating content or having content out daily um or by daily or like you yeah, know we'll like just you, say daily. daily like daily um your, your business is going to die. And I think it's just a fact of the matter. I mean, yeah, sure, there's other traditional traditional ways that work. But at the end of the day, no matter if you're a personal brand or a brand or you own like a multi-million dollar brand, if you are not creating content every single day, your business will die. And that's just the truth of the matter. I've seen it where people, you know, you see all these retail companies going out of business. I forget what the stat is. I was reading it the other day, but it's just interesting because they didn't take their model and put it online. And a big part of that is, creating content, right? So we know where I'd, our ideal client, our ideal client avatar is hanging out. Sure. Now it's time to actually know their problem so that we can start creating content for them. So okay. there, you can, when you're online, you can actually segment the people who your ideal clients are into three buckets. So you have your cold audience, your warm audience, and your hot audience. Okay. So the way that you create content, you need to be creating content for each step of the audience. So people okay. who are in the cold audience, people who are in the warm audience, and people who are in the hot, hot audience. So okay. at a basis level, at the high level, you need to, to, to be hitting your content pillars on all three levels. So we can okay. dive deep more into that if you want. Yeah. So, you know, let's just, you know, cold is kind of like, hey, you're jumping in cold yeah, water. Yeah. Uh, people who are in cold water, you know, don't really yeah. know you. Yeah. Uh, they may have heard of you like once, twice, you know, but they don't really know who you are. Yeah. Um, and so how do you kind of go about, you know, getting them people, getting yeah. those people? So when it comes to content creation, this is a big part of the habit of creating content. You need to be creating 
visuals that are convert or visuals that are growth or posts that are growth based. So there's different ways, and we're today we'll just talk about organic. I sure. built my business 100% organic. Yeah. Um, but in a, you want your posts to create posts that are shareable and saveable. So that is to get your cold audience lead. So for example, if you're on Instagram, you know people who use a lot of quotes or people who use a lot of viral posts. That is for the actual cold market. People don't know who you are. Your whole goal of your cold audience is to get them from a a random page, maybe on Instagram or on Facebook, from a Facebook ad or wherever it may be, into your warm section. Okay. So that's using like growth posts. So like I said, quote posts work amazing on Instagram that are shareable and savable. Um, Videos that people are more likely to share. Those are awesome for growth. That just makes people aware of who you are. Right. So that's that's what I would recommend for people if you're just starting out like, okay, I don't have I don't have a lot of people coming in in the cold audience. Well, you need to think of if you're doing organic way, what are posts and whatnot that people will share? Right. Because, you know, here's the thing. A lot of people, and this is what I specialize in, helping people going from warm to to hot leads. Yeah. The warm leads is where you start having more of like personal brand photos, people letting people into your story, educating them, all that kind of stuff. But again, the big part of that where people miss out is that whole cold, cold audience, and that comes from like shareable and savable content. Yeah. The, uh, do you? I mean, can you give an example of what a cold, you know, cold post yeah. to, you know, maybe warm. Yeah. So a cold post, for example, could be something that's strictly educational. So okay. um, give me a topic. Uh, well, we're on habit-based yeah, lifestyle. So, so let's just say habits. Yeah. Habits. So, um, you know, three ways to form a new habit. Okay. So for example, so that could be your headline, right? And you would have a graphic that people would be more likely to share like on their Instagram story or on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever it is that you're going for. So that would be something that people are like, okay, cool. I'm going to sh- save that or I'm going to share that with a friend, right? Because it's a quote post. It's something that, you know, people can resonate with. It's not exactly you. Yeah. I mean, that's in one of the other things I've heard. I don't know if I heard it on your podcast. I think I did was to not put your logo yeah. on those. Um, and maybe even, I think it was just your logo or your website because that made it seem like you were, you know, trying to kind of like push them into that space. Yeah. I mean, I think it's not always bad to have your logo in there. I don't know if I've said that on my podcast. I don't know. Maybe I have, I don't know, but I think if you could have any time brand recognition, that's awesome. But again, as soon as you put something in like that, people might be less likely to share because like it's a business, right? So some really, really good examples of this in the the industry I work with is if you go to a page called like bossbabe.inc, they have an amazing content strategy. So for those of you listening right now, just, I know it's, it's all nice and pink and stuff, but it's an amazing example of how they use growth content to funnel into their, into their warm audiences. Nice. And that's Boss, Boss babe. Babe. Dot a. Yeah, like, dude, you work with all these. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. some of the women you work yeah. with, but some of the other ones, I'm like, I don't know who yeah. the hell that is. Yeah, but. yeah, but that's a, a good example, awesome. right? So then, because that get, again, it gets people sharing and saving. They'll come over to your page, and then that's where they get to know, you know, who Jesse is, who Brody is. They ch- choose to click the follow button. Okay, so then we we let's say we get them into the warm place. Yeah. And then what, what's kind of the goal or the outcome there is I know it's to get them to the hot. Yeah. But like, how do we get them there? Yeah. So what I, in the, for our industry, for example, in the coaching space, I would say considering someone a hot lead would be getting on a sales call with them. Right. They're visiting your sales They're page. taking action. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's more of just like using your call to actions to get people into the, to the hot leads. Those are people who are reaching out to you in your DM. You're having a conversation. Um, Those are people who are, you know, maybe on your email list, opening your emails. So your call to actions to those people should be, you know, sign up for a sales call, you know, sign up for maybe another email list or for that webinar. That's an hour that you're going to sell into. But the where a lot of people miss out on is the middle phase, which is the warm market or the evaluation stage where a lot of people, there's tons of options out there nowadays. So in your evaluation stage, you should be using a lot of social proof content so an amazing book um, for how to influence people is by Robert Cialdini. It's amazing. It's, I think it's on persuasion. So one okay. of the best ways to persuade people is showing social proof. That's There's a reason why Amazon is so good at that because, you know, if you're on Amazon, for example, and you're going through Amazon, you look for the products that have the most, you know, ratings. Reviews yeah, right? ratings. Yeah. So in our space, especially in the transformational space, 
it is so important to be having, you know, social proof content in there every single day. Um, the warm market is also very important, like the intimate type of content where they get to know your story. Like I tell my story all the time about being the only person in my class flying to, you know, Florence the first time gets people to like really know, like, and trust you. Right. right. Um, another example, more educational content, but you can put in more, some, some more spice. Maybe you have a photo of yourself with an educational piece. Those types of content really funnel in to the, to the, the hot leads. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so really, the hot lead is where they, that person has taken some type of action. Yeah. Whether it's you know private message, whether it's you know filling out an application, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I and the whole goal. So you from the cold market. Your your goal is to move people over to follow you, so mm-hmm. they follow you. From the warm market, your whole goal is for them to sign up for a sales call, a webinar. Um, a, like going on a webinar where your sales page or or your email list. That's the whole goal. So that's the funnel of where you want to move people through with your content. And I like to kind of call this the organic funnel. Yeah, the organic funnel. Yeah, and you know we have you know like I said fifty different options yeah. on this. Um, and so really like you know I think of I think of social media now as kind of like when I first started my gym. Yeah. And having a business card and going to you know get lunch. Yeah. Going to the grocery store, going to get gas, going to you know maybe another gym, or just kind of being out in public. Yeah. And every time you were out in public, somebody's like, "Hey, what is you know what is that fitness company? Like, where is it?" And it's like, "Oh, you know, let me tell you about it." Yeah. And I I always remember how easy it was to talk about it and just be like, oh, this is, I own this place. You know, here's what we do. People are always like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And who doesn't want to get in shape? Yeah. Like everybody, but like for whatever reason, like we make it way harder on, you know, Instagram, on Facebook, because we're not willing to, you know, kind of like, it's like I could promote you, but like when it comes to promoting me, it's like, oh my God, like, uh, what do I say? Yeah. You know, it's like, what do you do? Oh, I, you know, transform people's lives. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, it's like, well, dude, what do you think it means? Yeah, exactly. And that's, I like that you brought that up because for anybody who feels like that, if you're listening, you're like, I'm too scared to tell people of what I do. Right. You're doing a disservice to them by not telling because they might need your services or they might know of people who need what you have to offer. But I know what you mean. It's one of the hardest things. Yeah. And, And to get around that, I would go with, for anybody who struggles with that right now, as I would create an I help statement. So okay. I help ideal client with problem. So whatever problem they have, achieve sure. result. So okay. if there, if I just wanted to throw that out there for anybody listening, if you're like, I struggle with Yeah, that. so what is yours, what does yours go you know, like? So for my brand photography business, I help you create three to uh three months of visual content in in five hours or less. Okay. So right cool. away. So people people in my industry are like, oh wow, like I want that, right? Right. Well, so, I think everybody wants yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's mine. But that's again, then all of that works into your content plan. Because if you have that clear I help statement, then that works into your content plan, right? Right. It's your modern day business card. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, you know, I, I think business cards obviously are outdated. Websites are are kind of outdated. Yeah. Um, but what everybody does seems to do nowadays is, Hey, you know, who's your Instagram? (laughs) Yeah. Who's Brody. And then it's like, they'll go to Facebook, they'll go to Instagram and those are kind of your business cards now. Like, let's just be honest. hundred percent. Um, and so you want them positioned. Is there a specific way that you want, you know, say at the kind of the headline of those to look so people kind of know who you are? Yeah. Um, to get them to be like, oh, I want to find out more about this guy. Yeah, so for sure. Again, I think it all comes back to that I help statement. So if you're just like starting out, I don't know, are a lot of people on the listeners, are they just kind of starting out? They have a business? Yeah, I would yeah. say most of our listeners yeah. have their own business. Okay. Uh, they may just kind of be starting out on social media Perfect. or uh, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, <laughs> but they may not be doing anything on yeah. social media. Yeah. So the perfect place to start is with that I help statement. So okay. anytime I train people, I start off. If you can't say who you help in one sentence, you're going to be all over the place because one day you might be talking about fitness. Next day, you know, you might be talking about business. Next day, you might be talking about Instagram marketing. So if you're just starting out and you're like, I'm, I'm this whole social media, this whole content thing overwhelms me. Start off with that I help statement and everything falls into place from there. Because again, if you know who you help, 
what problem they have and what result that, that you create you get into their head and then you know to actually go out and create that content that moves them from the warm, hot or hard, cold, warm to hot. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like a ice bath yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. You know, to the fire, to whatever. the fire. Yeah. yeah. But that's the whole thing. Start off with that. That's your modern day. I help statement business card. And then from there, if people, people relate to that, you know, you're like, I help you create three to five months of photos in three hours or less. Like, okay. okay, that's a problem that I have. I want that. I want to be able to do that. For you, like, what would your help, I help statement be off the top of your head? You know, I help, uh, you know, motivated or busy entrepreneurs, um, you know, have more energy or make more money with not having to spend more time, you know, away from their loved ones. Yeah, amazing. So then all your content pillars. So from there, you'd break that down into the content pillars of, one of them would be probably around energy or biohacking. Okay. Um, one would be around probably family, and then one would be around business. Yeah. So, so I, I, you know, I have the four pillars, yeah. which is like you know, fitness, health, yeah. spirituality, marriage, relationships, and then business. Exactly. So then, all your content you should be mixing in within your content within each week, which you do. But for somebody listening, if you don't see that from the from the outside, that's right. exactly what Jess, Jesse's doing. Is you have created a system and a methodology from your I help statement, right? So that's as we get deeper and more advanced. So you probably have your simple I help statement. Well, then you created your methodology and your system, right? With the four pillars. Right. And then from there, your content deviates from there um, based on what the problems they have around those four pillars. Sure. I mean, I got to be honest, yeah. man. Sometimes I'm, you know, the way that I was originally taught on social media was like, do a Facebook post, yeah. do a Facebook video, yeah, uh, do an Instagram post and you know, maybe do a, a short copy or long copy. Yep. And then maybe a graphic. And like, we had to be relentless. And it was like a military school on yeah. doing this. Um, and I got to be honest with you, there was never a direction of, you know, do this, point it towards your avatar, do this. And so, you know, I think I remember the entire first year I did it, I was like, oh my God, just put out content. Yeah. Um, and what's cool is you're you're actually saving people you know, like myself, a year mm -hmm. of, you know, trying to figure, figure shit out. Yep. And it's like, no, figure out your target, uh, you know, figure out your target, figure out the one place where that target person hangs out yep. and then start there and just stay there until you've had enough success that you're able to move to the next thing. Yeah. And that's, I think where we can really, really bring in habits here. What I see the most common thing is people will, you know, go for a month's time. So they'll say, I've tried it for a month. Well, no, you have to form a habit over six months to a year and then, at, you know, ask yourself, well, is this working? And of course, it should right. be working within probably a month. Like you should be getting some traction, but it's not going to blow up. Like you're not going to be a Gary Vee or a Tony Robbins day one if you're just starting to post. Right. But that's where you have to become, uh, form such a good habit of being able to show up every single day when no one's watching. Right. Because three to five years from now, there's going to be eyes watching. And yeah. you'll thank yourself for showing up every single day. Yeah. I mean, dude, if you're like, it's like, I remember days where you would post, it's like, oh my God, this was awesome. Like this was one of my best posts. And then you had like one, a half a person like liked it. Yeah. They liked it. And then they took the like away and yeah. you're like, oh my God. You're like, thanks mom for liking yeah. it. <laughs> or it's like your whole family or your network yeah. that likes you. And it's like, okay, well, how many people are liking this outside of that? Yeah. So it it really makes you kind of second guess, but it also makes you compare, like you said, guys like Gary Vee, it's like, you know, hey, he's got, you know, a million likes and I have like five. Yeah. You know, and it's so it, it makes you kind of compare second guess. Um, what do you say to people who, you know, maybe are afraid? You know, what do you think most people are afraid of first yeah. is like, you know, it's like you always think about the one person. You know, whether it's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, or the friend that you don't even really like, yep. but you know they're going to talk shit about you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it happens all the time. You know, I mean, I'll be honest. That happened to me at first, too, when I was doing Facebook Lives. When the, my family, I mean, we're from the ranch, right? They're like, yeah. what the hell are, what are you, you doing? doing? Yeah. Like, why are you showing up on camera? So I get it 100%. And I think, honestly, it comes down. The biggest person that people are scared of is themselves. Right. It is always, right? I mean, at the end of the day, yes, it's all on the outside. People, you're worried about people's judgment or what people are going to say. But where does that come from? It's rooted from what you think about yourself, right? right? Right. And what I always say is what other people have to say and think is a reflection of how they feel of themselves. So yeah. 
for myself, I put my blinders on. I don't even look at other people's content. So if you really, really want to form a habit, don't scroll. That's yeah. my number one thing okay. is don't scroll and just become a creator. Create, And you, you probably hear this all the time, but create more than you consume. And it's the truth. And I think for myself, that has been the biggest thing is if I find myself scrolling for more than 10 minutes, I put my phone away and say, "What? how can I be creating? Can I jump on a podcast right now? Can I write a post? Can I send out an email to my list? Can I send some DMs? Uh, I think that's the biggest thing. But at, at the end of the day, it's always ourselves that we come back to what people are most scared of, right? Sure. It's the belief that I'm not going to be good enough. Yeah. And I would say this, you know, the things that we tell ourselves aren't half as bad as what other people may say to oh, us. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I can remember doing my videos at first. I think I, the first time I ever did videos, I did like 130. Wow. And like, I mean, I made it like a challenge, Yeah, 130 days straight. You know, I was doing a video every day, you know, and I had all these people like, dude, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> you're going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> and I just remember like after about three weeks, I kind of quit caring, Yeah, you know, and I didn't really think about it. But it, it made me really like sure of myself when I got on camera because at the end of the day, hey, like it's kind of like you're exposing yourself and it's not like now you have uh, Facebook Live, yeah. which if you're on Facebook Live, there's no going back and oh, like no. yeah. redoing your video. <laughs> it's like, dude, this is live. Yeah. And, uh, and, and really it's kind of like, okay, Facebook's Live's like the vulnerable version of you. You know, recording a video first and then putting it up is kind of like, like the halfway yeah. in between. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of like real life. Even, you know, now you have stories. You know, can you talk a little bit about stories and what you do, like what the purpose of is that? Yeah. So anything that you do online, no matter what it is, it all comes down. I, I'll say it again. It comes down to that cold, warm and hot or what I like to call is the you know awareness evaluation to the purchase. So okay. on Instagram stories, this is one of the best evaluation tools that you have for your audience, in my opinion. So people choose to follow you. So that's the awareness or that's the cold, the cold level. Now, where people really get to know, like and trust you and where you'll make a lot of money if you want to make money on Instagram is those Instagram stories. Okay. So how I leverage them is I do tons of mini trainings on there. So two to three times a week, I will do like a minute long Instagram story training on like a topic. So maybe on branding, maybe on, you know, I have my pillars of I help statement, um, visuals, conversion, like all that kind of stuff. So I make sure I have that in my content every single week. And I'll tell you for anybody listening, those are the ones that I get backed on the most. So if you look on your analytics, if you have a business profile, you can see how many people tap back which means that people watched it and want to watch it again. Okay. So that has been huge for me. So for anybody listening right now, I highly recommend doing mini trainings on your Instagram stories. Okay. But essentially what it is, is an evaluation tool, which people get to know, like, and trust you through so that they end up in your DMs. Same thing okay. goes with like Facebook live video. Sure. Any type of video is an amazing, your best evaluation tool because that's what gets people to actually reach out to you in the DM to convert them to go into that sales call or to that webinar or to your email list. Okay, nice. So uh, can you give me an example of kind of like your training? Do you, like, do you have a framework? Do you have a framework that you use for your trainings that yeah. you do? Yeah, for on, on Instagram. Yeah. So again, yeah, it comes, I, I call it the energy framework. So okay. number one, you have to nail your niche, right? So you need to nail your niche and who you're talking to, which we kind of talked about at the start. You need to create the relevant content, educational, intimate, social proof, and then sales content. Okay. And then growth. So there's different ways to grow on Instagram. You know, hashtags, they still work. There's an awesome way to do that. Um, there's, you know, tons of ways to grow. Viral content, which we talked about, the shareable content. But essentially, if you form all of those together, you have people coming over to your profile. When you've nailed your niche, you've created the relevant content and you're growing. Now it's time to convert people. So people come over to your profile. They're like, okay, I, I just come across your profile, Jesse. I, I like what you have to say. I like your I help statement, your content pillars. Okay, I'm going to click the follow button. So now every day, I'm going to be looking at your stories to see if, you know, do I like this stuff? Like, what is he talking about? What's the, what's the intimate content? Like, what is he showing behind the scenes about his kids, his family? Is he integrating this? Is he giving me some value? 
If right. I do like that, then I'll click the link on Instagram, for example, or on Facebook. This works for any platform, but you click the link, they either join your, your email list, they join your webinar, they join a sales call, however your, your sales process is. Sure. And then that's how you convert. Okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So, you know, we, we talked about avatars, we talked about, you know, posting and like going from cold to warm to hot. Yeah. And then we talked about, you know, positioning on stories and things like that. Is there anything else that you would add to, you know, there's a lot on social media, yeah. let's be honest, yeah. but like just to make it simple. Yeah. To make the simplest thing is if you show up every single day and give value, you'll win. Okay. So if you wake up, like every day I wake up and I say, and I make it a habit, I'll bring that habit in. I make it a habit to say, how will I serve my audience today? I ask myself that one, that one question every single morning. Okay. And if you show up and actually fulfill that question, doing a training, going on a podcast, pitching to be on a podcast, doing a mini training on your stories, you'll win no matter what. Okay. It's my true awesome. belief. So yeah. it comes down to that one thing, show up and how do you serve? How long have you been on Instagram? I started using it probably three to four years ago. Okay. But like when I first started it, like I was posting pictures like the, like I was like, it was like me in me with a, on the ranch. A cow. <laughs> Is that me? Here's me at a cow. Hey, come do pictures <laughs> yeah, with Yeah, come me. do pictures with me. You so, want to marry my yeah, cow. Yeah, exactly. And you I'll take to your ranch. photos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's the thing. I think something we all have to realize is all of us had a day one at some point. Right. And I think so often that people want to skip that day one and go to that, you know, year 10 when there's a whole learning gap that you need to go through, you know, posting a picture with a cow for your first Instagram, right? Or, you know, shitting the bed on your first Facebook Live, like um, the right. ums, the ahs, or launching that podcast that might not sound that good on the first episode, right? But a lot of people are scared to have that day one. And if you have that day one and show up and serve every single day, you will win. Yeah, I remember uh, a friend of mine actually told me on my first live video, he's like, dude, you sound like a drunk Canadian. Yeah. You said, a. um, you said, um, and a, uh, like 300 times. Yeah. And I said, oh man, like, yeah. and then I was like, I don't think I ever want to do a video again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then that was what actually made me do the 130 videos, like 130 days straight. Amazing. And I that's, like, I'm going to prove this punk wrong. Yeah. I love it. And that's the thing too. And I think another thing, like in this little tidbit is, I don't take criticism from people who aren't in the ring. People right. aren't doing like, let's see you do go do a Facebook live then and see it. Let's count your ums and ahs, right? So of course, I mean, they're doing it out of a place of love, but I always say yeah, I, you do have, you do have those people come yeah. up every once in a while. Yeah. Like the spell checkers are the ones yeah. that really <laughs> like bother me the most. They're like, Hey, you spelled this wrong. And yeah. I said, Hey, I haven't seen you post anything for like a month. <laughs> yeah. So unless, you know, you want to post every day, like, yeah. Hey, shut the hell up. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, but I can't do that to my wife. No. She likes to she <laughs> likes to do that to me. She usually send me my she'll send me my post yeah. and then she'll have the whatever I need to spell check in red. You're like, oh thanks, Kate. But I haven't got one in a while. So well, there you go. You're doing good. <laughs> yeah. So well, hey man. Uh it's a pleasure having you on here and just being able to teach, you know, the the creating content and just the habit of of doing it. And I think what gets overlooked inside of any of this is anything that you can make a habit. Uh, it's like you can, you know, it's better to make it a habit than it is to not do it. Yeah. Um, and you can make adjustments along the way. And I think, you know, for people listening, whether it doesn't matter where you're at in the process of posting, just start making it a habit, start posting content on one channel, like measure it, test it, See how you do, but give it at least how long? Like six, nine, six months? Yeah, six months, I would say. Six months to a year. Okay. Six months to a year. Now, of course, like, you know, I'll offer, for the people of your podcast, I have a content course. Okay. I, if you message me on Instagram at Broads Images, it's a $200 course. I'll give it to you guys for free on okay. the show. So that can help you a lot. If you're like, I have no clue what I'm doing with my content. It's literally a, a mini course that takes you through. Okay. And hundreds of people have gone through that. So I'll give that to your listeners. That's awesome, man. So uh, anybody listening, I'll make sure I put in the show notes, uh, Brody's Instagram uh, link that you guys can link up with that. And uh, he's amazing. And I, I would say this, anybody listening that needs a brand photographer uh brody is the man thank you man yeah brody's brody's amazing uh he not only makes me look better uh <laughs> than i actually do in pictures but his like everything that you've came out with man like just what we've got 
uh, me and my wife is has been amazing, and I've been super impressed. And not only impressed with the pictures, but just how you show up, how your energy is, and just how you know I I really look at you as like you're like this amazing kid who's you know you're it's like this bright light walking around. Thank you. Um, but it's cool to see and, and you know congratulations on all your success. Thank man. you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for those kind words. Yeah. And thank you for being on the podcast yeah, today. Thanks for having me. Okay. If you guys are looking to connect further with a group of like-minded people, join myself and so many others in the Habit-Based Lifestyle Secrets group on Facebook, where I will be dropping daily habits to help you live to your full potential. If you want to be one of our next case studies and begin living this habit-based lifestyle, check out our website, habit-based lifestyle.com. Until next episode, have a great day.